hello everyone my name is ankur gupta um if you haven't uh, seen or heard of me before then you know uh, i'll introduce myself so i've been with this com product group uh last four years um i did present last year and i believe last last year and maybe the year before that i i don't really remember but but yeah i've been a uh, regular here and uh, uh you know uh, been with the team for four years uh so uh scom mi uh, since its inception and uh and you know now it's uh getting into an adult product right uh ready to use right so today we are going to be talking about uh, the latest and greatest in scom mi um you know uh you know i i am cognizant of the fact that quite a few of you might not have heard of the product or might be new to this or uh you know uh are not updated with what the vision of the product is so you know bear with me we'll spend about 10 minutes talking about the basics such as the vision uh, the pricing and uh, then we'll move on to the meat which is the latest features that are there and uh, and of course the the upcoming uh, features and roadmap also right um so yep let's uh, get started right um yeah as i mentioned the agenda of the presentation today is going to be a vision of the product uh then we'll talk about we'll quickly cover the pricing uh usage and feedback numbers uh and the latest features updates and upcoming enhancements right uh so let's start off with the vision video uh bruce can i request you to play the video pineapple cop one of the S500 customers in the retail space. Pineapple has 5,000 Windows machines and 100 Linux machines in their store and use Azure services to power their corporate functions. They currently use COM to monitor these services in the store with 10 management servers and 10 gateways and capabilities of Azure Monitor for the applications on Azure. Most of the store operations are using two-tier applications consisting of Oracle databases and web tiers on IAS or Apache. For cost and operational benefits, Pineapple Corp has decided to move the majority of its workloads to the cloud. And they recently initiated an assessment of their environment for Azure migrations from the SCOM console. They found that it would be 34% cheaper if they move all their applications to Azure. They triage the applications and decide to move 80% of the applications to Azure and close their contract with Rackspace by the end of the year. They chose to adopt lift and shift approach for moving the applications to Azure and inquire about setting up observability on the migrated workloads. The remaining 20% of applications are deployed on standalone workstations and servers that are not a part of the engagement with Rackspace and are going to stay on premises. James, the IT admin for Pineapple Corp, is concerned that with the migration to Azure, they would need to redo the monitoring rules in place with SCOM and looks for recommendations. The Azure Migrate assessments recommend James to move to Azure Monitor SCOM Managed Instance. James finds the service on the Azure portal and starts to create a new instance. The experience guides James with the prerequisites that help him prepare the environment and presents the standard Azure experience to take the different inputs. Once all the inputs are given, the instance takes 45 minutes to deploy a SCOM instance in James's subscription. James follows the migration guidance to start monitoring applications migrated to Azure. He is able to discover and monitor migrated applications in SCOM MI with a few clicks. After achieving continuity of monitoring for migrating applications, James now looks to address the needs for the applications that are staying on-premises. He finds Arc viable. 
James is able to discover unmonitored ARC enabled machines and configure them with SCOM managed instance. Once configured, there is no difference in monitoring experience for Azure VMs and ARC enabled machines. Lastly, James wants to consolidate monitoring and operations for the small set of applications that are firewall restricted and domainless. James sets up managed gateways on an existing ARC enabled server, discovers and starts monitoring workloads which have line of sight to this gateway. James reuses the management pack configurations in place on prem and redeploys them on Azure without any changes from the monitored resources section on the SCOM MI homepage. He starts seeing the alerts that used to be on SCOM in Azure Monitor. He can see the alert details, the context, the state, the owner, and other things which helps him to act on them. As more workloads get migrated, James adds them to SCOM managed instance. After a limit, he notices a warning suggesting the SCOM MI instance needs to scale out. In the on-premises deployment of SCOM, this was a major step for James that included provisioning new management servers and configuring the agents to use it. With SCOM manage instance, this is made a one-click experience. The affinity of agents to management servers is automatically handled by the service. James does not need to update any of the agent configurations. Now that James has discovered and is monitoring applications, he needs to see the live performance and metric dashboards to know the health and availability of the applications in real time. With a few clicks, James is able to view and analyze operational dashboards and metric reports on an existing Azure managed Grafana instance. Pineapple Corp is also using advanced analytics to identify opportunities for further fine-tuning the application architectures and monitoring rules. James wants to extend this to include the migrated applications. He needs the monitored metrics, events, and alerts information for these applications to be available in a log analytics workspace. James connects the MI instance with an LA workspace to achieve data periodically and hence make it accessible to further analytics. By doing so, James's team is able to configure reporting dashboards on Azure workbooks that can give a glimpse of the long-term state of the environment. While Pineapple Corp is executing the migration plan by gradually increasing the applications on Azure and monitored with SCOM MI, Microsoft releases updates to SCOM. Typically, this is a major event for James and he previously used to meticulously plan the upgrade for the SCOM deployment and the agents. With SCOM MI, he is happy to learn that this is a non-event. Microsoft ensures that all the agents are always kept up to date and automatically updates the MI instance in the time window provided by James. This means James does not have to have an administrator who knows about SCOM and its upkeep. The Azure administrator who manages the rest of Azure monitor capabilities can extend to maintaining the MI instance as well. Overall, with the capabilities of workload health monitoring using the management packs, with minimal need for operational upkeep of the infrastructure, and reduced training costs courtesy a single pane of the glass experience with Azure monitor, Pineapple Corp is able to execute the migrations better and maximize the benefits to the cloud. Uh, so that was the vision video of, of what the product uh, is meant to be. And, and of course, you know, uh, as, as time goes on, we build in more capabilities uh, day by day, right? 
Um, so let's quickly talk about the pricing uh, of the product, right? Um, so SCOM MI is priced uh, for uh, based on two things. One is the endpoints that you're monitoring, the number of endpoints, and the second is the infrastructure in Azure that you're using. Um, so the endpoint cost is six dollars per endpoint per month, and the infrastructure cost is you know the SQL MI, the VMs that that you're using as part of uh, SCOM MI, they they will be charged. Uh, which is pretty much like other Azure services also, because uh, you know, as in pay as you go pricing, the amount of infrastructure you're using is is what you're charged for. Um, so so that's uh, that's that's a brief uh, summary. Um, of course, there are some who have said they've had cost savings when they move away from the SC license and then they adopt Scom MI on a you know full time basis. Uh, there there are uh, savings there. Right. Um, and, and of course, the number of uh, because it's a managed service, you know, there are many feature value additions. Uh, the number of admins required to manage this com environment goes down. And so that results in significant cost savings over a uh, long term. Uh, some of the usage stats, uh, right, uh, to, to show you how the usage is going. Uh, so we went GA around December uh, last year, December 2023. And uh, of course, it was you know we wanted to announce it during Ignite, and uh, and and you know so we we were cognizant of the fact that it was holiday period, so we didn't naturally see a lot of uptake in December. But post December, you know, since January, right, there have been uh, quite a few customers who have reached out, who have silently tried, right. Uh, Forty-two unique customers have have tried already creating an instance successful fail and then they reach out right uh, before that there were 70 unique customers who had engaged us pre-ga right and uh, two customers are using it for monitoring the prod servers with 3300 plus endpoints or servers already being monitored from ga right so we are seeing some uh, uh healthy adoption so far right um uh, you know and and right now because it's uh initial days of the product we are getting customer feedback also which we can quickly uh you know improve on like if there is a bug in the product you know customer reaches out to us or raises an icm ticket and we can quickly iterate on the same to to fix the bug um you know improve the product experience um so some of the latest features that we have added since we went ga uh, which was a few months ago right uh, so we went GA, there were only two regions that were supported. And since then, we have covered 90% of all the Azure Hero regions, and uh, as well as some of the regions which have been unpopular ask, right? Uh, so let, like uh, South India was, was a very popular ask, so we started covering it. Uh, Germany West Central was a very popular ask. And, you know, the list of regions right now, it's 15. Uh, you can see the list here and uh, we are also targeting to deploy it in azure government regions uh, which is fairfax in the next uh, month or so and uh, and so yeah so government customers should also be able to use uh, scom mi soon uh, smoother onboarding yeah so a frequent feedback that we got uh, when we were uh, when we showed the product when customers tried it was that the onboarding process is slightly complex and uh, because of the number of steps involved and then one of the key questions we used to get asked was why is a NAT gateway required right uh, it's not safe it's not this and and so you know we we heard that and we have removed the requirement of a NAT gateway and uh, another key uh, thing that we have worked on is the SQLMI RP permissions are no longer required. And uh, the parameter validation tab has been made more robust. Right. So, so, so that should ease some pain from the deployment process. Right. Um, a key benefit that we are adding and in fact we recently enhanced quite a bit is at scale agent and gateway onboarding plus multi-homing right um so when we went ga right we had the capability it was in preview but we had the capability of onboarding agents and gateways via the azure portal and uh, 
you know we worked on making it at scale so it, instead of one agent if you have uh, you know 10 15 20 agents that you want to onboard via the portal you can do it uh, you know there is check boxes available that you can select multiple agents and onboard them right and it's the similar uh, scenario for gateways and in fact we are also uh, you know encouraging multi homing for those who want to try out the instance which means that if you have a scom on prem scenario set up today and scom mi set up you can multi home your agents and you can uh, you know confirm the what the data that is coming in it's correct and then you know of course it's it's on you to onboard it but but multi homing is a supported scenario and uh, and and we we you know a lot of customers are trying it actually right a uh, visualization integrations uh, so as you saw in the video right we have uh, quite a few options uh, for visualization we have azure workbooks we have log analytics you can integrate your instance with a log analytics workspace and visualize there uh, we have a grafana integration we have power bi and of course you know in when when you go in and into the section on power bi we do say that you know if you are using squared up dashboards you can continue using squared up dashboards with scom mi right so quite a lot of visualization options that are there with uh, with, with the product right um, so I would quickly like to, since we have time, I'd quickly like to walk you through a live uh, example, a live instance of what we have today, right? Uh, so just give me a second while I share my screen. Right, so here, uh, this is what SCOM today looks like, right? Uh, it's, uh, I, I created this instance some time ago. It's, it's a provisioned instance. Right. Uh, what I was talking to you about uh, at scale onboarding of uh, agents and gateways. So today, if you go into the monitor resources tab and uh, we do, a, you know, it's in a preview still, but uh, that's because we want customers to test it before we go GA with the feature. Uh, so you can onboard ARC agents, you can onboard on-premise agents, you can also onboard Azure VMs, right? Uh, you can if you want to remove at scale, you can select multiple and just click on remove and then they will be removed, right? If you want to add agents at scale, that you go to add a monitored resource, right? Uh, you can, you know, select multiple, uh, let's say I, let me select these one, two, and I will add them. Yeah, so here it will give you some disclaimers and then some warnings and uh, it will allow it will ask you if you want to enable auto upgrade on your two added agents. And if you click on install, then, you know, I, I think it will take about two, two and a half minutes and then you'll see that your uh, agents have been onboarded. Um, so we're not going to wait for that. Uh, you know, it, it's the same experience with uh, managed uh, gateways also. Right. If you have gateways you want to add, you can do that. And uh, in terms of the visualizations, I believe, you know, uh, uh, we do have some out of the box charts that are there uh, with the product. Uh, you know, again, that depends on the data that you want to show. And then, uh, you know, you can, you can start monitoring your instance very quickly. Let me show you some log analytics right you'll have to configure your log analytics workspace it's uh, it takes about five minutes i believe you know uh, to to quickly configure your log analytics workspace and then start querying your data right and uh, with power bi also it's a similar situation you configure your dashboard and then you can view your dashboards again there are some out of the box dashboards that are available to use and here we mentioned alternatively you can connect squared up and bring your monitoring into life with interactive dashboards right uh, you can do a, a resource health check of the azure resources that are running in your instance okay. so let's see if our agents have been added 
I think it should take maybe half a minute more. Maximum one minute more. Yep. So all the machines have been successfully onboarded, right? Uh, we do a refresh. We'll be seeing our agents onboarded here, right? Um, it, uh, you know, here, these are the ones that we added, right? So, so, and you can see the health status also, right? So that's a pretty uh, convenient uh, features that we have added. Right. Let me go back to the screen. Okay. Right. So yes. So we have talked about the uh, the latest features that we have added since we went GA a few months ago. Right. Now let me talk about some upcoming enhancements, and I think this should get you uh, really excited. Uh, again, talking about the onboarding. Uh, you know, one of the things that we heard is onboarding is very difficult. And uh, so we went ahead and we took the step of removing the requirement of having an on-prem AD connection for SCOM, to, SCOM MI to function. This means that you don't need a domain account, you don't need domain connectivity, uh, you know, you don't need domain joining. Uh, for those of you who have already tried SCOM MI, you know that this is probably the toughest uh, step that is out there while onboarding and uh, takes up to several days right uh, for large customers they have to talk to multiple teams to to try to configure their setup it's it's a it's it's a painful thing to put it uh, you know very subtly and uh, and we are removing that requirement so onboarding with that right uh, uh, we are removing uh, key vaults right uh, you know, we uh, so there, there is no need once a domain is removed there is no need to store secrets anymore so key vaults are not needed and we are always finding new ways to reduce the number of onboarding steps so the latest com mi instance that you'll see maybe in about a month and a month and a half right the onboarding is going to be significantly more easier uh, probably reduce your onboarding time by up to 60 to 70 percent given that there is no domain joining required and everything is handled via Azure Active Directory. Uh, so, so that's a that's a big improvement that we have. Uh, we are working on Azure native MP experiences. So that means that we are working on experiences to manage COM manage impacts via the Azure portal. Uh, note that we are not talking about creating management packs. Once a management pack has already been created we will allow them to be imported edited deleted and overridden via the azure portal uh, this is a slightly longer poll item right uh, probably uh, you know if I, if I was to give you a timeline it might take about six months to uh, nine months uh, more to to be implemented so expect it uh, probably sometime in 2025 um, and a key part of uh, what we are targeting is uh, we are targeting the entire operation operator persona as your monitor uh, experience, right? So which means that today on this com ops console, we have the operator persona doing whatever they do, right? Which is monitor workloads, uh, maintenance of, of those workloads, the MPs, right? Uh, and, uh, and we want to uh export that entire experience onto the azure portal so that it feels like scom mi is uh, more deeply integrated with the azure monitor experience right uh which means that as we talked about uh operating mps on the portal uh maintenance mode on endpoints uh we are exploring integrating the alerting experience deeper with scom mi uh today uh uh, when when an alert is is raised in scom on prem it goes to the ops console and then it goes to the azure portal and then of course if you have itsm tools connected it uh, goes via connectors to uh, the itsm tool of your choice right uh, we are working on uh, uh, rather we are exploring uh, a seamless integration which means that when you change something in the azure portal it gets reflected back in the ops console as well and vice versa Right, so so pretty seamless alerting experience. Uh, we are working on uh, integrating workload specific dashboards for analysis and insights. Um, again, this is something which is uh, work in progress. I believe uh, you know all these experiences 
uh, might take another uh, four to five months so probably again don't quote me on this but but the tentative timeline is probably by end of the year we, we expect uh, you know these to go at least in preview if not live right um and uh, and then some other experiences that that we are working on integrating r and azure based r back model right today the scorm r back model has been preserved uh, it still uses the ops uh, console based uh, model that we have um and uh, and and so we are uh, looking to uh, move that to a azure based r back model uh, we are uh, exploring into improving linux support uh, so today, uh, SCORM MI does support Linux monitoring uh, for on-prem Linux servers. Uh, those have to be connected to a gateway, and uh, and and then SCORM MI can monitor them. Right. Uh, gateways for isolated networks. Again, this is something that is uh, pretty much uh, there today. Uh, but but some some question some customers do ask about the capability, and you know so so yeah um so that's uh, that's it from my side i i think question and answer will be in uh, uh, you know the other portal 